I don't do that. I hey, I don't do that. I don't do that. Get the, no, I don't do that. Mm 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 mm. I don't do that. What's going on, YouTube family? Noah from Kicking the Bass TV here with another Tackle Tuesdays. And this week's Tackle Tuesday is over topwater frogs. I'm going to jump in to the um, rod and reel setup, the line, um, and all the frogs, where you would fish them, how you would fish them. Um, so, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. So, when you open the box, there's really not too many different frogs out there. Um, there are a few different styles, but there's really not too much, and it's pretty self explanatory. So, um, I got a couple different brands in here, I got a couple different styles. Um, one style right here, I couldn't exactly tell you the brand of these because um, I cannot exactly remember. But these don't have those stringy tails on them. Um, they're pretty rough, like, as you can tell right there. Um, really soft frog. And that's just a little different approach um, to look like a frog. I actually like, and these, these do have rattles in it, which I really honestly do not think it's going to make much of a difference. I'm going complete, to completely up, tell you right here. Um, with crankbaits and like Carolina rigs, stuff that's under the water, I really could see rattles and beads and stuff like that making a difference. But when you're on top of the water, I really don't think it's going to make a big, that big of a difference. Um, you're already pretty much making a ruckus with the frog anyways over the top of the surface and stuff. So I wouldn't see too much of a point in the rattles. But that's just one style of frog that I have. Um, I have some popping frogs, which they do have their times. Um, here's a couple natural colors. They're... They're a little different. This one's more light. This one's on white on the bottom. This one's more yellow. Um, this one has some brown and some dark green. This one has some light green and white and yellow. Um, and so, when would I use a popping frog compared to like um, a normal frog like this? Um, sometimes the fish want want that racket. They want um, something to really piss them off. Or not exactly piss them off, but just to attract them. Um, and that's pretty much when I would use this. So one day they're going to be hitting this one. Um, the next day they may want this one better. Um, also, I really like throwing a popping frog in more of open lily pads. Um, right now when we're at Ufala, the lily pads were more, they were more open. I hate Ufala, by the way. The lily pads were more open. They weren't as big. Um, and you could throw something like this popping frog in there. Um, and get it to pop a lot more water. If you're in those really, really, really thick lily pads, I would more recommend just a normal frog like this. It would go through it way easier. And if you're going on top of the lily pads anyways of this, and you're not over water, it's not gonna pop anything. I mean, you're just gonna be sitting there dragging it across. Um, also, if I had a lily pad in front of me, I would show you, but next time you're on a lake where there's lily pads, um, pick one up, and what, I mean, they're pretty tough. They're hard to break and stuff, but pick one, pick one out of the water. If you go look at my post on Instagram, I posted one. Lay your hand on top and tip it over. You can legitly see your hand. Um, they're pretty much see-through, but you see you see the object or your hand in black and white. So next time, that, that's something you can do. So <clears throat> when you're running that frog over the lily pad, they're seeing that. So what I usually like to do, just another quick tip, is when I throw the frog out there, I'm working it. Um, I'm working in those open water spaces, I'm walking it or I'm just hopping it, however I'm doing it. I get over that lily pad, I may pause it for a second, I'll just stop it. And um, every once in a while, that fish will come up and just boom, right right through that lily pad. Um, every once in a while, it'll be under there just staring at it. And it's waiting for it to hop off. So you can just pause that thing and wait a few seconds and then slowly work that thing off the lily pad and usually when you get to the edge of that water right there that's when the fish will just crush it so they can see through those lily pads so don't overthink that um, don't overlook that don't just be going over it and thinking a fish won't hit it over I mean when you're on the lily pad every once in a while if you pause that thing they will come up and just launch that thing um, so yeah that's pretty much what I would use popping frog regular frog 
um, just depending on how open the lily pads are and such. Um, also, if you're fishing grass, you can fish both pretty much. And they're both pretty weedless, um, same range. There's another one of those, it's just a bigger size. It's in yellow. Um, and going into color, I normally don't throw too many of these natural colors, the yellow, the, the green, the bright colors like that. Um, I mostly stick to something white or black. And for the most part, here you go. You got you got a white one right here. I believe this one's by Jackal. Um, the bottom's white. You got you got a black spur right here. By the way, this is the one I was using in the pond video for all you guys that have been asking. This is a spro. Um, it's just black and white mixture. Pretty um, good looking frog. Um, that one's black on the bottom. It has a little bit of white, but it's not going to make that much of a difference. This one has white as well. Um, but when you pick up, let's see, this colored one right here. I mean, this one's white too. It's green on the top. I mean, that's the same thing, guys. They're, they're seeing under the frog. They're not seeing on top. Um, so I, I really like to stick to the black and the white, it's just simple as it gets. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Um, it, they could be hitting the black better than the white, but that's pretty much the colors that I stick to. Um, so those are some spro ones right there. Got a jackal one. Also, this one's a little different. It's called a bonsai. I believe it's called a bonsai shad by spro. Um, and as you can see, those strings are coming off totally different. They're not, they're not um, to the side. They're straight up and down. Um, and this is pretty much imitating like those shad. Say there's a shad spawn on the edge of those lily pads and stuff. Um, or those fish are chasing shad. This is really good. You can walk the dog, like walking the dog like with a spook and stuff. You can walk the dog much easier with this frog, with this bonsai shad. Um, much easier than you would with the frog. It, it may take a while to get used to. I can do it. Um, but you just got to fool around with it when you're working the frog. But you can really um, make it go back and forth. Like you're working like a spook or something. But this one you can work a lot quicker. And you can um, walk the dog much easier with. It's pretty neat. I actually really like that color. A really soft frog. Um, frog, shad, whatever you want to call it. Here's another black frog. It's got a little bit of yellow on it. Worry about that too much. Um, my top favorite um, frog brands would probably be Spro and then some of the Jack ones are good as well. Spro you can't go wrong with. Um, they are a little pricey but you cannot get wrong with it. Here's something that you guys probably have never seen and you're looking at that thing like what in the world is going on? That's one funky looking bait. Yeah I know. Um, what we got going on here? So you're um, throwing those buzz baits early in the morning and you're trying to get that early top water bite and um, sometimes when you're throwing that buzz bait it, it gets stuck on those lily pads. You usually don't have too bad of a problem with it because you're throwing through the cracks of the lily pads just getting it through there. Um, but this is a really great idea. Um, this has the buzzbait blade, the frog-like body, and also just like a saltwater plastic um, or a plastic frog, it has the paddled legs. So, I mean, you're getting all three baits in one, and you can throw this up in the lily pads, and I wish I could tell you um, the brand of this, because I know you guys are going to be asking after seeing this, um, but you can pretty much throw this back there, and it's pretty much weedless. I mean, the hooks are on top, just like a normal frog, and you can pretty much just reel it across. It's a great idea. Definitely go check it out. Um, it's a pretty cool idea that they did. I'm surprised Spro and them haven't came out with something like that. Um... Here's another black one. It's got some purple. I actually like that one a lot. This one walks really good. Um, that's a jack one. And you got some big mama. Big mama hunka donka right here. Um, that's a big frog. We only have one of these. I honestly do not know why we have that frog. I mean, compared to a normal frog, ridiculous. No idea why. Um, I believe that is all the styles. I have a few more brands in here. Oh, there's a Spro. I like that one a lot. That one's a little see-through. God, those hooks are short. That's a, that one's a little see-through. Um, it's brown. Pretty much the dark colors. Brown, white, black. I mostly stick to black and white, though. There's another black one. I mean, as you can tell, you can still see the braid on there. That's the ones I mostly just use. 
I believe that's all the frogs, guys. Here's here's a white one, and that buzz bait looking one. Definitely look into that. Um, it's a great idea. It's another one right there. Oh, set the chemo. off. Or I think we took that off. Um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much all the styles of frogs. Um, we just have all different colors in there. We have plenty of frogs. Um, we do not get the fish frogs a lot which I really don't like. I really like fishing frogs. I can't really go on Lanier and go throw a frog. You're sitting, you're sitting, you're sitting in your boat in 30 foot of water and throwing over brush piles. I'm not gonna throw a frog out there. I mean, you can throw it up shallow and stuff, but I'm not a shallow water fisherman to be honest. I'm, I'm mostly out deep, especially on Lanier. Um, but I really enjoy throwing frogs and um, I know you guys do too. With the pond fishing videos, um, if you ever go to a pond, definitely go through a frog. Um, you'll be amazed. It's pretty fun. Um, I guess they're just not used to seeing that. They'll just crush it. It's amazing. Um, just go through a frog. Like I was saying, I was throwing that um, black and white one in that pond video. Actually, I have one tied on my pole right there. Um, just that regular one. It's a really good one. Any black, any white, really good. Um, I was throwing that at the pond. They were killing it. Today is Tuesday for Tackle Tuesday. Wednesday or Thursday, I'm probably going to be filming a pond video. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. And I know you guys love those vlog like pond videos, so definitely stay tuned for that. I'm going to be trying to get tons of videos out to you guys, as you guys already know. Um, so let's go ahead and stop talking about that. I'll get to that at the end of the video. But let's go ahead and go over the rod and reel combo that I use for my frog. Um, this is a Mojo Bass swim bait rod. Um, it's a really, 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 really tough rod, and it is a swim bait rod. I mean, I use it for my frog. It's <laughs> Um, my dad just got here. He's over there taking a schmedley now. Um, serious. So, Mojo Bass Swim Bay Rod. And this is a 7.9 heavy power fast action. But it, it is a meat stick. I mean, it's, it's a tough rod. Um, really, 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 really cheap rod. It's around, or inexpensive, I guess I could say, rod. Um, around $100, so it's really affordable, really great rod. And the reason why I'm using a Mojo Bass rather than like a Legend Extreme is you really don't have to go out there and spend all that money on a rod for top water. to be completely honest with you. Um, if I was using a jig or if I was using a worm, if I was using a fish hood, if I was using a spinner bait, um, crank bait, something like that, I would want a rod with the sensitivity. But I'm picking out this Mojo Bass for the fact that I don't need as much sensitivity so I can get a great rod and a decent price. Um, so definitely go check out the Mojo Bass series rods. They're really great rods, really reasonable price, and you can get them um, at SyncroRods.com. The reel is the Abu Garcia Revo Rocket, um, and this is a 9 to 1 gear ratio reel. This is a really fast, and why do I have that 9 to 1 gear ratio reel? When I'm throwing that frog and I'm throwing it up in those lily pads, I'm not I'm not talking about like the ponds and stuff, but I'm throwing them up in those lily pads like at Ufala and stuff. And when those fish hit it, or if I'm throwing it in grass, when those fish hit it, they can take off in that grass and you, you want to get them out of there as fast as possible. That's the reason why I have this big old meat stick of a rod. Um, and that nine gear ratio reel is really going to help you huff that fish out of the pads and it's not going to get stuck. You're not going to have a problem with it. And this is um 65 pound braid spider wire, um, really recommend it. Cheap stuff, um, and it lasts a while, a while. So, and that's the frog I was using in the pond video, just like I showed you over there. I have a couple of them, just black and white, standard one. So if you guys are pond fishing, definitely go try a frog. Um, and also this past weekend we're at Ufala, we vlog the whole thing, and it's pretty dang funny vlog. You should be cock right now. <laughs> if you watch the vlog, you know what that means. <laughs> All right, but um, at the end of this video, I'll throw up a few links of the vlog. There's part one and part two, so definitely check it out. Start off with part one, end it with part two. You're definitely gonna want to watch Will the whole thing. you finish this video already, so, so I can um, take a schmedley. Check it out. He's gotta take a schmedley. Um, Chris is already dunked down in the corner taking a schmedley. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, until next time, guys. End it with the bakai. <laughs> I can't. Keep taking your schmedleys. See you guys next time.